like what is operating system so it's basically a software which act as an, a manager of hardware so our computer system our mobile device our computer system is basically a bunch of things together so it comes with hardware as well as software and operating system acts as an interface between computer and the computer hardware as well as and the user so to just hover over what exactly operating system do so it basically performs all memory management operations processor management operations device management operations file management security control job accounting so all these words might seem overwhelming but yes so we will be talking one by one on each of these and we try to be every layer where and how operating system is working so the agenda for today's discussion is to discuss some of the intrinsic details of what exactly giving you an overview of uh, what exactly operating system is doing so coming back to my pre uh, previous definition operating system is an interface between computer hardware as well as and the user so its goal is to provide an interface where user can start their applications and it provides a seamless environment for running those applications efficiently so i mean that uh, make make the computer system convenient to be used like if i if i click one application it has to respond me within some microsecond or second Otherwise, if it is taking a longer than one hour or so, I will not be using that particular computer system and also discard that operating system. So it's all about making or using computer hardware more effectively. So computer system is divided into four components, hardware, operating system, application program, and users. So we are the users who uses and at the second level uh, comes the application program which are something like word processor web process browsers databases video games uh, compiler programs all these are application programs which are running over the operating system now under and along with the operating system there is another thing is called system applications so system applications are used to assist the main component of operating system that is kernel we, we, we will be discussing sooner so here is a um, diagrammatical view of what exactly i was saying so there are users who are trying to uh, run their applications on the computer hardware using uh, different uh, system and application programs uh, so this is how they are interacting with them so so directly user is not controlling any hardware user is just sending commands to application program then application programs basically uh, give command to give command to uh, so this basically happens like so user give a command to database or compiler and compiler uses is given instruction to operating system and operating system then runs the command or instruction set onto the computer hardware so computer hardware you can assume as a microprocessor where everything would be running as an instruction so we will be uh, going more into detail of how these instructions would be run but without going into detail of the hardware so our agenda of operating system is not to teach the hardware but we will be working closely and we will get to know about how this hardware is also working so operating system is basically a user wants a conven convenience ease of use and good performance so this is all which an operating system uh, gives to the user so but the shared computer such as mainframe or mini computer keeps all users happy uh, users of dedicated systems such as workstation have dedicated sources but frequently use shared resources from servers so these are some examples uh, of higher end systems uh, where users are different type of users are using those systems for different type of requirement uh, so we will be discussing more on it how this all is happening 
so coming back, uh, an operating system is a resource allocator where it manages all the resources and it is also a control program that controls the execution of the programs to prevent errors and improper use of the computer. So basically, one is its, its requirement is to manage the hardware by allocating the resources properly to each and every program and other is stopping and securing the system so that a user program should not intrude into the operating system program uh, and it should not make use of that operating system in an o or improper way so there are mechanisms for that so for operating system there is no universally accepted definition everything is like everything that a vendor shifts, uh, we can consider that as an uh, uh, operating system. But within all these examples, so we we should know that there is one program that runs all the time uh, when your your computer is on is that called kernel. So kernel is heart of operating system, which has which has the functionality, functions, and so many code things are running, which makes your uh, to perform. Uh, basic computer operations are from managing the the show of running a computer system that we have already discussed at the start of the slide now uh, starting with the next uh, moving next so we we will try to figure out how we move from the start of the computer to the end how all those programmings are coming so whenever uh, so whenever a computer starts up the first program that runs is called a bootstrap program so it's normally a tiny program which knows uh, when a computer turns on which knows where is the first instruction to start the kernel so it knows how to initialize the system and it loads its operating system kernel and starts its execution and kernel then starts and putting everything into place and all the processes are into running condition so that it is available for accepting the user input. So it's just like your when you are going to start your program or computer or uh, your system. So it's basically boots up and then uh, ask for the user gets ready for asking for the user input. So if any one of you has an experience of installing uh, uh, dual booting uh, like Windows along with Linux then you must have encountered with a bootloader program that is used to uh, load before actually kernel starts working. So it, it gives an option to which operating system you have to select. So it, it places those bootloaders commands just before the kernel, which is basically the operating system by default that comes with. So we will be discussing more on it, no worries. So computer system operations and organization is, it, it could be one or more CPU devices connected together through a common bus. So here we have a graphic adapter that is used to connect to monitor, printer, keyboard, mouse. So all these are devices and all these devices are connected to CPU, but that goes through disk controller, USB controller and graphic controller. So each controller could be another microcontroller or microprocessor. So it could be one or more CPUs device controller that connects to a common bus providing access to the shared memory. So basically this is the heart of uh, connection, interconnection between all these, uh, these devices uh, which can access uh, the common memory and the shared memory to run and execute the programs effectively and efficiently. So going forward, IO devices and CPUs can work concurrently. So most important part of an uh, um, operating system is to listen to IO requests and process those IO requests and accordingly take the data and deliver to the memory or to the CPU. So, so these programs can actually run concurrently with the advancement of technology such as a DMA, so direct memory access that is also allowed. Each device controller is in charge of particular device. If you can see back, the USB controller is in charge of not only one, but one, two, three particular devices. So this is a comp the, the, the power of USB controller that it can control multiple devices at the same time. So uh, this, this is basically uh, the job of a device controller. So device controller has a local buffer 
So from where uh, the data from CPU moves the data to and fro from main memory to the local buffer and IO device from the device to the local buffer of the controller. So basically each controller has a local buffer where it puts the information whatever is coming and whatever is going into the CPU. So whenever a new data comes in device the controller tells the CPU that it has finished the operation by causing an interrupt. So this interrupt is in the heart of computer organization or operating system. So this actually tells that that there is some operation has been performed successfully or not performed successfully. So based on that, it asks the CPU to take correct action. Now we are going to discuss about the most important feature of operating system uh, are interrupts. So now operating system is called an interrupt driven uh, software basically because it uses interrupts to manage and handle the devices, the processes in, in the operating system. So an interrupt is basically a service routine. So whenever an interrupt is encountered by CPU, it actually transfers the control of CPU to an interrupt service routine. The type and the start of that service routine is handled in interrupt vector, which handles the type of, uh, based on the type of the interrupt, it stores the addresses of uh, interrupt service routines. So there are two types of uh, interrupts. So basically one is hardware enabled or generated uh, interrupt, another is a software generated interrupt. Those are called tra traps and exceptions. Now other two types can be said like that like interrupts could be maskable or the other version of it is interrupts can be non-maskable. So maskable is one which can be turned down by CPU if it is already doing some critical work, whereas non-maskable cannot be turned down by CPU and those are reserved for unrecoverable memory errors. So whenever an interrupt is encountered, the operating system preserves the state of current CPU or user uh, process by storing the register and program counter. This is kind of context switching and uh, which we will discuss later on. And then we have, uh, there are separate segment of code uh, determines what action should be taken for each type of interrupt. So that is basically based on the mapping and each service routine, interrupt service routine would have certain steps to determine what action should be performed. Now here is a timing diagram of how the interrupts would happen. This is more like uh, when a CPU is running some user process and user process requests an IO de device to uh, fulfill the IO request. So initially the IO device is idle and the user process signals for uh, the IO request. So whenever an IO request is received by IO device, it started performing the operation and when the transfer is done, it creates, it signals the interrupt to the CPU. So when, whenever there is, whenever the transfer is done, uh, the interrupt is signaled, the CPU changes uh, its control give its control to the interrupt and perform the required operation and goes back once the interrupt is handled it goes back to the user process so here is a number one request and then there is another request for io request by the user program so now we are going to discuss about storage structure so there are different uh, types of memories those are attached to computer system uh, a cpu would load instructions only from the memories and usually uh, that memory is called the main memory from where the CPU fetches the instruction then put it into the cache memory and then to the register for the final execution. Now the first three memories are volatile memories. Which loses uh, the content as the power is turned off and, and non-volatile volatile memories. Now as we move up from bottom, so we can see that the speed of these memories are increasing. So this one is slowest and this is the fastest memory. It means that the access time is actually decreasing as we move. Another difference is as we move uh, up from bottom is that the size or decreases so this is largest 
and as we grow the, this would be the smallest in size so uh, the the formation of these families is also different so in the first top three are mostly semiconductor based mammals another concept uh, is uh, direct memory access and uh, this helps uh, to independently transfer the data from io devices directly to the memory with the minimum intervention of uh, a cpu uh, device controller transfer blocks of data from buffer storage directly to main memory without cpu intervention and it is used for high speed io devices those are uh, able to transfer information uh, at a close to the memory speed so normally rather than uh, sending interrupt per byte uh, here the dma is actually sending one interrupt uh, per block so here is a block diagram of how uh, this dma works. so we can see that the thread is running and it in initiates the io request the io request would be initiated on the device but the, with the initial data transfer and interrupt so it basically cpu would allow it to transfer data directly to the memory after initial setup uh, with the cpu so this would actually uh, enable the devices to directly communicate with the memory with minimum intervention of cpu and the cpu can use those cycles to do other instruction execution and data movement so dm is a very powerful feature of modern computer uh, operating system moving forward we are going to discuss about single processor system and that form the basis of our today's era computer system architecture in single processor system we have a central processing unit that comes with a single control unit single automatic unit and set of registers those are used for computing and executing the instructions in addition to that it has a memory unit so that memory unit is used to store the instructions which central processing unit fetches and executes it comes with uh, like in input and output devices so where from where the input is taken and it is thrown on output devices after processing so this uh, is a system that is basically a single core single cpu single core system so moving uh, then comes the multiprocessor system so this is this is a new era basically so where uh, where we tried to connect multiple cpus together to work on a single uh, application or multiple applications so those are also known as parallel systems so it's a new era computing uh, those are basically tightly coupled system and we will be discussing there are there are different architectures for multiprocessor systems coming to uh, distributed system cloud computing and all that new stuff so what are the advantages of uh, going forward with the multiprocessor systems so it basically increase the throughput increase the scale at which you can use your computing resources increase the reliability like with the fail safe you are if you have only one processing unit and that fails because it's a, it's a electronic circuit then your whole of the computation and results would go away so in case of that we we run and uh, we run it on multiprocessor system where the the degradation is graceful or well, fault tolerance is always there so if some component of a, of a job is down then there are mechanism that other system would take take that particular load and run it so that's basically more into distributed system as we move forward in in this particular subject we will get to know about how these distributed systems would work now there are two types of multiprocessing system one is asymmetric multiprocessing another is symmetric multiprocessing in which each processor has uh, equal assign responsibility and perform all the tasks that is called symmetric multiprocessing system and whereas in asymmetric we each processor is assigned a particular task so based on that particular task mechanism and scheduling we uh, distinguish between the multiprocessing architecture so most of the operating system uh, nowadays operating systems are compatible with uh, the symmetric multiprocessing environment so this is of the block diagram of multi symmetric multiprocessing architecture you can see that you have cpu1 cpu2 and cpu3 they are having their own individual register set and cache and along with their central processing core uh, each has an individual and they share between they share the data between uh, through a, a so this is something a shared memory model but 
but yes they they have their individual register and cache to run now another uh, thing is uh, dual core design so we uh, these days we see dual core design quad core designs so in, in this particular thing so we have one processor and within that processor we have cores so it, this is core one and this is core two and this all is happening on processor zero so processor it has two cores and within that each core is responsible and has different registers and cache now you can see that there are l1 cache and l2 cache and nowadays the systems are coming with l3 cache also so so basically these all are the levels of the memories which we have discussed previously so the speed of l1 is certainly better than speed of l2 and then l3 and then the main memory so it, the speed is varying and these all are level of the memory sports are sport is provided so you can see here l2 cache is shared memory whereas l1 and l1 in both the cores they are different and registers are different so this makes a dual core and design of a system now moving forward if we, we say that uh, we can use uh, multiple processors on a single chip uh, can we use multiple systems on different chips for example our computers in the lab our desktops in our home or laptops can we use them together to solve one problem yes we can use that and that is something called a clustered system those are working together so clustered uh, systems are definition with, which are basically available on a LAN but specifically if I go uh, on more to more generic definition so there are systems which can be can share their they are miles apart but they can have an access to a shared storage called SAN so storage area network provides uh, accessibility to each and individual uh, processor whoever is working on a, a same particular problem so it provides high reliability services uh, which survives the failure because because multiple systems are working on a on, on jobs so they provides and make our system or network more fault tolerant uh, now there are within within cluster system there are two types one is called asymmetric clustering where one machine is hot standby so which actually just look at what is being done and in case of failure take control of uh, the whole network and the other is symmetric clustering where multiple nodes are running and they are monitoring we are not going into detail for that but clusters can use for high performance computing to solve one particular problem uh, and each shares some component of it now applications are written uh, using specialized programming for parallelism now when when uh, they are sharing a single shared resource how the access is managed so for that there is an, a distributed lock manager who knows which and if somebody is somebody if some processor is using that shared block it actually uh, locks that particular thing so we will be discussing this into more detail